Welcome. In this short video, we're going to show how to use Roots Magic with a program called GenSmarts. GenSmarts is a utility that makes research recommendations for people in your Roots Magic file. It takes the person and analyzes when and where that person lived, and based on that information, suggests record types that you should look in. Now, GenSmarts doesn't know if your specific person is in those records. It just knows that a person who was born in a particular time period in a particular location, uh, what types of records are available for that time period in that location. If those records are available online, GenSmarts will help you search for your person in those records. If those records are not available online, then GenSmarts will show you what library has those records so that you can go look them up physically. So let's just go ahead and jump in and kind of show you an example of how this works. So I'm going to select Stephen Busby. That's my great-great-grandfather. And I'm going to come up here to Tools and go and select GenSmarts Suggestions. Now GenSmarts is a standalone program. You install it and you can run it and then import your Roots Magic database if you wanted to do it that way or import a file from any other genealogy program and it will come up with a list of research recommendations for everybody in your file. But Roots Magic specifically integrates with GenSmarts to make it easy. So you can just highlight a person in your Roots Magic file, ask for GenSmarts suggestions, and it's going to come up with suggestions right inside of Roots Magic. Now these are the suggestions and you can step down through those and as you highlight a research suggestion it's going to display some information down here about that suggestion. First it's going to tell you why GenSmarts even made this suggestion in the first place. It's also going to show you what the family might look like in that particular type of record and it'll also show you where that record's available, whether it's available on a website, whether it's available in a library, or so on. Now, if a record is available online, you'll have a button that says look online. When you highlight it, you can look online. On the other hand, if it's not available, like this Orangeburg, South Carolina County probate records, those are not available online, so the button's grayed out. But if I scroll down to the details, I can see where that record is. It's in Salt Lake City, at the Family History Library, and here are the roll numbers and the titles for those records so that I could actually go do a physical lookup. Now if I wanted to see all of these details for all these uh, suggestions all at once without having to go through and select each one individually, I can just come up here and click on Print and Generate a Report. And Let me bring this in so you can see this. And what this is going to do is generate a report that has all of the suggestions with all of the details about that. So there's the second suggestion, there's the details, and so on. Third suggestion. You can just keep going. And that I can then print this report out. I can save it as a PDF so that I have available all of the details on these suggestions. So that's just a way to get all of them. So let's go ahead and let's say I want to look and see if Stephen is in Arkansas uh, land patents. And so I'm going to highlight that option and click Look Online. And GenSmarts is going to start up and try to find my Stephen Busby in land patent records. In this case, you notice it took me to the Bureau of Land Management and found three land patent records. Now, GenSmarts knows about all kinds of websites. It knows about big websites, small websites. It knows about free websites like Family Search, pay websites like Ancestry. Um, if a record type is available on a free and a paid site, it will try to use the free site. Okay, but it will, uh, it knows about all these types of records, where they are, and in this case it knew that the land patent records, this is where they were. So I'm going to go ahead and look at it. I'm going to go ahead and look at one of these. I'm going to click on the image and it's going to come up and display this land patent for me. And there it is, my Stephen Busby. Now this could have been another Stephen Busby. I happen to know that this was my Stephen Busby. Um, but 
it is going to send the information about that person, their name, the, uh, their details, to try to narrow down the search on the on the site, whatever site it happens to be, in order to display that. So I have an actual copy right here of a land patent record for my great great grandfather, and I can come in here and I can print it out or do whatever I want with it. And again, each website is going to be different. I could individually go to all of these different websites and search for them, type in information, and, and do that. What GenSmarts does is streamlines that for me. So let's say I want to actually look at a different type of record, South Carolina. I want to look at death records. So I'm going to say let's look online for those, and it's going to come up. Now in this case, you'll notice it's taken me to Ancestry, and it's actually telling me, um, you know, if you're not, or if you're already a subscriber, you know, I didn't tell GenSmarts that I was subscribed. If I did, I wouldn't see this header. But in this case, I'm not signed into Ancestry. Um, but I'm going to scroll down here. And here is the Stephen Busby, and it happens to have the birth date that I know for him. And it, in this case, it happens to be on Find a Grave. So even though I'm not logged into Ancestry, I can actually go look at this record because it's, it's a Find a Grave record. So I'm going to go actually look at Find a Grave, and there is my great-great-grandfather's tombstone. Now, I will admit, I selected my great-great-grandfather and these two particular records because I know that these records exist. But both of these records I actually did find because of GenSmarts. I, GenSmarts actually made these recommendations and this is how I originally found these particular records was through GenSmarts. Okay, now let's say um, let's say I happen to pick a different type of record. Let's say I pick um, like an 1850, an 1850 census here, and I look online, and it takes me to, in this case, it takes me to Family Search, and I can go and I can see there's my Stephen Busby and there's the family, and I can click on that and I can go view view the record, do whatever. So you can see just just from this one set of research suggestions, I found several different records for my great-great-grandfather. On the other hand, I might pick a, pick a census record, and this is, this is one of the things that's really nice. Let's say I pick a particular type of record and I jump to Ancestry, and let's say I don't have an Ancestry account. Um, in this case I do, but let's say I didn't. If I went down here and I found a particular record type, let's say I was looking at the 1840 census and it was only available on Ancestry. Well, as you know, if you aren't if you don't have an Ancestry account, it's going to show you some basic information about the person so that you can actually see whether this really is your person if you know a little bit of information like I do know a little bit here. Um, but when I try to click on it to see it, it's going to tell me that I need to get a subscription. I need to actually pay for a subscription if I want to see the details. Well, if I don't have a subscription, here's a little trick that you can do. Let's say this 1840 census, I just clicked look online. I saw that Ancestry does have my Stephen Busby in that census, but when I click, I can't see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say add this suggestion to Stephen Busby's to-do list. And what it's doing is it's actually going to create a to-do item in Roots Magic, a Roots Magic to-do item for this. And I can go down here and give it the details of, about that particular link or whatever. But the important part here, and this is this is the trick, is I'm going to say I want to select a repository. And it's going to bring up any repositories that I have. In this case, I want to add a new repository called Ancestry. And all I'm going to do is put in just Ancestry. I don't need the, the street address or anything. And I'm going to say Ancestry is my repository. So I'm selecting Ancestry. I need to check the South Carolina 1840 census for him. And I can put in the details. And I need to do it at Ancestry. Okay. I could also say, let's say I found also found him in the 1820 census. But again, I don't have an Ancestry account. So I'm going to add that suggestion and select Repository. Ancestry is already there because I just added it. I'm going to select that one. And click OK. Now this is where it gets nice. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. 
what I can do is I can go into my reports and under research reports I can say I want to print my to-do list and when I print my to-do list I can do things like print out every to-do item but there's one that's really nice and that's all the tasks at a single repository I want to pick that it asks which repository and I'm gonna say ancestry select that and generate that report and what I now have is a to-do list with everything that I say I needed to search for on Ancestry. I need to check the South Carolina 1840 census for Stephen Busby. I even have his sound decks if I need it. Um, and, and where I'm checking is Ancestry. What I can do is I can print this out or save it as a PDF, take it with me to the Family History Center where they have free access to Ancestry and I can go right down through my to-do list and do those searches and get that information that I need for this. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, I'm going to open up Gen Smarts. I'm going to pull up Gen Smarts right here and so that you can actually see what the Gen Smarts program itself actually looks like and there it is back there and I just want to show you this when you are in Gen Smarts um, there's a bunch of options you know and again it will show you all of the uh, all of the the research recommendations for your entire database along with a bunch of other things so so if you run Gen Smarts as a standalone program it, there's a lot more to it. It's very powerful, very uh, sophisticated, um, you know. But here is where I can go in under the settings and then come here to subscriptions, and this is where I can tell it I have an Ancestry account so that it doesn't keep putting that header up when I actually access it from inside of Roots Magic. Again, I just wanted to kind of show you this. You can come over here to File and then Open and then Open Roots Magic or any other genealogy programs files and use this directly. Like I say, the integration with GenSmarts is built directly in. One final thing, GenSmarts uh, can make research recommendations for the US, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Um, I believe they are working on uh, collecting data sets for other countries, but those are the three primary ones that are suggested right now. And so I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, this demo of how to use GenSmarts to get research recommendations for people in your Roots Magic file.